Hello, good evening. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Antes de comenzar, ¿pueden escucharme bien? Ok, thank you. Ok, let's begin with this new course. My name is Elena Chavarria, and I am, we can say that I'm in charge of this course. So it's a pleasure to be here tonight and for this month uh, working with you. So, um, I think that it's going to be something really amazing. So for the first thing that we are going to say, uh, we have some things that we need to talk about. Um, I'm not going to say that they are like rules, but some things that we have to keep in mind. Um, for this course, I like to work in a document, uh, typing all the information that I am giving to you. So I am not like to use these uh, PowerPoint presentations. I like to write everything, explain the things that you are going to learn. And also I like to write examples in that way. So, uh, I think that is something kind of different in this kind of um, courses or um, classes, we can say like that, but I think it's better to understand the information. So, um, me gusta escribir la información en un documento, eh, en este caso lo vamos a hacer en un documento de Google, eh, donde voy a ir escribiendo la información que les voy dando y les voy explicando de esa manera para que vayamos viendo, ¿verdad? La manera en la que vamos a ir trabajando. So in that case, I am like working like that. Another thing that we have to keep in mind is something that it is just like to remember. Um, when we are in the session, we need to keep our cameras on uh, most of the time. If you can not have the camera on, it is not a, a big problem, but it's just like an advice. Um, also, you have to keep your microphone off uh, most of the time, but if you have some question, if you want to say something, uh, you can turn on your microphone and ask or tell the things that you want to say. Um, also, it is important that um, that you can like, participate in the activities because it is for you. It is the, the things that you are going to learn. So it's something that you already know because it is not your first time uh, doing uh, these things. But now we are going to start. I am looking that some participants have some problems to enter the um, enter the, the the meeting. But I don't know what is the problem. So now we are going to start for this first session. We are going to talk about an, a specific topic that has to be with past. We are going to make like a review of the topic because it is not the first time that you. Um, have learned this uh, topic. Vamos a hablar sobre el pasado. Eh, no es la primera vez que ustedes han escuchado sobre ese tema, pero vamos a ir eh, recordando um, some information that you have about this topic. I'm going to share my screen with you. This is my uh, document in which I'm going to work. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I like to work in this way because I think it is better for me. And maybe it's kind of um, 
more dynamic in this way. So first thing, I have a, a phrase for you that is, um, I'm going to share these kind of phrases with you uh, all the weeks, just in the first day of the week, not each day. So the phrase said, what you tell yourself every day will either lift you up or tear you down. What you tell yourself every day will either lift you up or tear you down. Lo que ustedes se digan a ustedes mismos todos los días los pueden levantar, o sea, hacer los que ustedes se sientan bien con ustedes mismos o los pueden hacer caer, ¿verdad? So it is important that we have um, this kind of positive mind every day and tell the things that we are going to do are the best thing for us. So we have here the first thing, the topic. I uh, call this topic past because we are going to remember the past and the structures to create sentences in positive, negative, also questions uh, using the verb to be in past and also um, some other verbs that are the irregular and regular verbs. So what is the objective for this topic? Not for the session, for this topic number one. It, it says the objective that by the end of this class, you will be able to talk about your past using was and were in various regular and irregular verbs. And we have some examples um, of phrases that we are going to create. And it says the number one, I was born in Korea. I grew up in the United States. I moved here 10 years ago. I didn't speak English. Also, we are going to uh, be able to ask and answer questions in the past tense. This conversational um, English lesson will help you discuss your background in greater detail and get to know people. So for the first topic that we are going to develop, um, we are going to make a review. Vamos a hacer como un... Um, Vamos a recordar información sobre el pasado because in other uh, sessions you have to uh, learn this kind of information because it is not like the first time that you are going to uh, learn this kind of topics. Um, se supone que esto es algo que ya hemos visto con anterioridad, que ya tenemos eh, un conocimiento previo, podemos llamarle. And also the verb to be is one of the most used verbs in English and in this kind of process. So this is not something like you are not going to know anything because as I said, this is one of the topics that we are going to develop a lot of times in this process of learning English. So in this case, we are going to remember the usage of was and where and also we are going to remember uh, the regular and irregular verbs. Also, we are going to create just, not just affirmative sentence, but also we are going to um, remember how to create negative sentence. And then we are going to create questions. None of these structures, we are going to see it in this uh, session. We are going to, uh, have two parts. In the first one, we are going to see these kind of sentences, and in the other uh, part, we are going to create questions. Así que primero vamos a ver solo las estructuras positivas negativas de regular and irregular verbs en pasado, y también del was y el were en positivo y en negativo. So, now, we have here just the objective for this session, so now we are going to develop the whole topic. Vamos a desarrollar el tema completo porque básicamente nos está pidiendo que creemos. Why? Because we need to talk. We need to um, express ideas and also we need to um, establish this kind of conversation with other people. So now we are going to start. Let me move this one. Here, we are going to start with the structures. Vamos a comenzar con las estructuras to create our sentences. 
for this eh, first structure, we are not going to use the verb to be. No vamos a utilizar el verbo to be todavía. We are going to create a structures of uh, positive sentences with um, irregular and regular verbs. Esa es la primera parte que vamos a utilizar. Regular and irregular verbs. So we have the structure for the positive uh, sentences. We are going to write positive here. And we have this structure. We have the pronoun plus the verb plus the complement. In this case, we can uh, say that this is the, um, the simple past. Tenemos el pasado simple. Vamos a, a, tra a trabajar con esta uh, estructura que es del pasado simple. Lo más simple posible. We have the pronoun, the verb, and the complement. That's it. Three elements in this uh, structure. So if you remember things that I, I think that you remember all the pronouns, we have these pronouns. I, you, he, she, and it in the same. And also we have we and they. I am not writing you again because we have you in the second one. And we know that we have you in singular and you in plural. Estos son los pronombres, ¿verdad? Son los sujetos de nuestras oraciones. No volví a escribir you porque ya sabemos que tenemos you para singular y you para plural. That's uh, something that we have in mind. So now, what is the uh, structure or what is the word that is following the pronoun? Next, we are going to write the verb. In this case, is irregular or regular verbs. Vamos a utilizar verbos irregulares o regulares. Ya sabemos que tenemos una lista bastante extensa de acciones que se dividen en verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. So now, we have this example. I, and my verb is move. I move, and my complement is to Tokyo last year. That's my sentence. I moved to Tokyo last year. Then I have you took my notebook yesterday. Next one, we have he or she or it cook. In this case, it, it is not available to cook, but we have this kind of examples. He, she, it cook the breakfast two weeks ago. And the last one, we and they play soccer in the past. So we have here some examples. They are very, very simple. But in this case, uh, that we have something that we can, mm, we can use or not if we want to do it, but it is not like we are going to do it all the time. En estas oraciones, son oraciones simples que no necesitan eh, mucho para, para completarse, pero hay algo que podemos utilizar o no. Eso depende mucho de nosotros si queremos darle énfasis al tiempo pasado. And is this part. These uh, parts that we have at the end of the sentences, because it is not necessary to um, add this kind of a uh, time at the end of the sentence. Why? Because we have the verb that we have here that is in past. And that verb is telling me that this action happened in the past. Cuando tenemos estos verbos, que nosotros ya los vemos que están en pasado, no es necesario que le agreguemos el tiempo al final de la oración. Porque ya sabemos que pasó en un tiempo, ¿verdad? Que viene desde el pasado. But in this case, it's like to emphasize the information that we are given to 
the listener in this case. So it is not like necessary to add this kind of time, but in this case, it's like a specification because I want to tell uh, the other person um, the time this action happened. Yo sí le quiero agregar, ¿verdad? Este tipo de información extra para que la persona que me escucha eh, sepa en qué momento de la historia, en qué momento de la vida pasó esta acción. But it's not necessary to do it because it is um, understandable that this action happened in the past. So this kind of sentence, it is not really hard to understand because we have this kind of a structure. Cuando ya tenemos nuestra estructura, es mucho más fácil de entender cómo vamos a realizar nuestras eh, oraciones. So, now we have the negative one. Vamos a crear una en negativo. It is almost the same, it's almost the same kind of a structure. But in this case, we are going to add something to um, make people understand that we are um, working with negative sentence. So in this case, I have my structure that is first the subject. We have the subject plus didn't. In this case, we are going to use did not. Then we are going to use the verb and then we are going to use the complement. Okay, here we have the structure for the negative one. We have the subject that is the person that performs the action. Then we have the auxiliary, we can say it like that, that is did not or didn't. In this case, this is the auxiliary do in past. Aquí tenemos el auxiliary do, que es el auxiliar, ¿verdad? Lo que nos ayuda a nosotros a entender que nuestra oración, primero, está en negativa y segundo, está en pasado. So, using this um, auxiliary, we can change something in this sentence. In this case, the verb is not going to uh, be in past. Al usar el auxiliar en pasado, ya no vamos a utilizar nuestro verbo en pasado. Nuestro verbo va a quedar en base form. Va a quedar en, en su forma base o como nosotros le podemos decir, en presente. And then we have the complement that we can add all the information that we want to say. So we have some examples. Again, we are going to write all the pronouns. Vamos a escribir todos los pronombres. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Okay, now I need to write did not or didn't. We are going to write in the in both um, ways. Then I have didn't. Then I have did not. And again, I have didn't. Okay. In this case, when we are using the auxiliary do in past, it is not necessary to change um, the form when we are using the third person. Uh, it is not like in present because in present we have do and does, but in this case, it is not necessary. En, en pasado no necesitamos nosotros cambiar nuestra estructura para la tercera persona. En este caso, pues, lo mantenemos así, eh, de igual forma para todos los pronombres. No como el do y el does, que cambia su forma en presente if we have the third person. But in this case, it is not necessary. So now, we are going to add the verb. And in this case, we have lay. And we have the complement soccer in that team. Then we have by soda yesterday. Then we have in the third one, sing in the contest. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and the last one. Go to the cinema. So we have here our sentences. So in this case, uh, we make a big difference um, between the positive and the negative ones. Uh, if we have this, um, the things that we are going to mark, in this case, we have here the verb, and the verb is telling me that I have this uh, sentence in past. En la positiva es el verbo el que me está diciendo a mí que la oración está en pasado. So in this case, I don't add the EG at the end of the verb. So, but in the case of the uh, negative ones, it is not the verb that is telling me that we are writing this kind of sentence in past. It is the auxiliary. In this case, is this part that are telling me that I am talking about the past. Let me mark this one. And the last one. Okay, here we are. So, eh, en esta parte, ¿verdad? Es algo que no está tan difícil eh, porque ya sabemos que en presente, pues obviamente solo utilizamos nuestros verbos irregulares, irregulares, que the regular verbs are those that eh, just add ed at the end of the, of the word and the irregular ones that change their form. Um, solo los, los agregamos, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos que tenemos nuestra oración en pasado, pero es positiva. So in the next one, in the negative one, we have this auxiliary that is telling me that I, that I am uh, using this kind of sentence in past and in negative form. Um, a través del auxiliar es donde yo puedo darme cuenta de que estoy utilizando lo que es un, eh, una oración en negativo, ¿verdad? Y que eh, está en pasado. But in this case, if you can see in the negative ones, we don't add the time, the specific time in which the action takes place. En la parte negativa, no todas las oraciones, just this one, solo esta, have the time. Solo esta tiene un, un tiempo específico en el que pasaron las cosas. The other ones is just in past. When? I don't know. Because in the first one, it says, I did not play soccer in that team. When? Maybe two years ago, maybe a week ago, maybe two, 20 years ago. I don't know. I don't know the, the time, the exact time in which I played in that, or in this case, I didn't play in that team. And the third one, he or she did not sing in the contest. When? We don't know. We just know that they have this kind of contest, but they don't participate in that uh, contest. And in the last one, we. They didn't go to the cinema. When? Maybe yesterday, maybe two days ago, maybe a week ago. That's um, a compliment and an extra information. So for this part, we are okay with these uh, two parts, with the positive and the negative, or we have some questions or something that you uh, have to say about these uh, structures. ¿Estamos bien con esas dos estructuras? Sé que ya las han visto antes y sé que ya se las han explicado antes, pero algo que quieran agregar o algo que no les haya quedado totalmente claro, it's time to ask. No? We are okay? Okay, okay, okay. So, 
also, we are talking about questions. Estamos hablando de preguntas a mí. Oh, let me see. Oh, you're okay. Thank you. Okay. We are uh, talking about question also. Uh, in this kind of question, we have two types. Tenemos dos tipos de preguntas. We have the yes, no question and the open question. We can say that we have closed and open. The closed uh, question are the yes or no, but um, I need to show you something first. Let me see if I can have it like this, this one. We have this uh, table here. Tenemos esta tabla aquí que ustedes ya la han visto antes porque son los verbos. So this is just an example of the verbs that we are going to use to create our sentences in positive um, or also in negative because we are going to use it. So we have the regular and the irregular verbs and we are going to use the, um, the past, not the past participle. We are just going to use the past of these kind of uh, verbs. But this is just an example to remember, just to remember the kind of, um, this kind of things that we are going to use. I don't know if I can work in like this, no. And I'm not using this. So this table just contains like 20 uh, verbs. Solo tenemos 20 verbos ahí, que son solo para recordar eh, la lista de verbos. We have a lot of verbs because we um, perform a lot of actions. So in this case, it is, it is the second one of this kind of verbs. And we have two parts that are the regular and the irregular verbs. That is just an example. Now, we're going to talk about the questions. Questions. We are going to um, write some information. We have two types of uh, questions. And we are going to see. I need, I need this one. And we have yes, no question. And we have open question. So in this case, we can say that these are the closed one. So what is the meaning of this kind of information. What is the meaning of that we have two type of questions? This is um, because we have this kind of question in which we answer yes or no, and that's it. It is not necessary to add anything to that answer. And then we have the other ones in which we can add all the information that we want. En este tipo de preguntas, ya que tenemos dos, En la primera, que es cerrada, es donde solo contestamos sí y no, y no necesitamos dar mucha información. Pero en el otro tipo de pregunta, pues obviamente vamos a agregar toda la información que nosotros queramos acerca de lo que se nos está preguntando. So, in this case, we are going to, let me see. We are going just to see one type of question. We are going to see the yes, no question in this case. Mm, no, we are going to um, talk about the open question because the next topic is about question with verb to be. So the verb to be, the question with, word, with verb to be are the uh, yes, no question. But the open question and when we are talking about the WH, word that we use to create questions. Las preguntas que son cerradas son las que utilizamos con el verbo to be. Y las que son abiertas son las que nosotros utilizamos las WH word. We are going to remember why, uh, what are the WH words. ¿Cuáles son las WH words to create uh, questions? 
we have what, where, when, why, who, how. These are the WH words. Uh, with this kind of words, we can create uh, sentences or questions that we can call open question. So we have some example of these questions. So we have the first one and I'm going to use it like this. So we have the first one. Where, where were you born? Where, the place. When did you move? When, the time. Um, what is your phone number? The specific information. Who is that man? Who? People. Why? Why are you telling me that? We need explanation. So we have here like this kind of uh, questions. Para estas preguntas, pues básicamente, eh, if you can see here in the, these ones, we have eh, this kind of words that can make eh, this kind of question in past. Tenemos también palabras que le vamos a agregar a las preguntas que nos van a ayudar a determinar de qué tiempo estamos hablando. In that case, we use the verb to be in past and also the auxiliar. That is the auxiliar do in past. So in that case, when people are asking this kind of question, you have to add all the information that you want. Uh, for example, in this case, it says, where were you born? Le está preguntando por el lugar donde nació, ¿verdad? Oh, I was born in Sulutan, and I was born in the in a private hospital in my mom and all of the things that we want to say. And the second one, when did you move? Cuando te fuiste, cuando te moviste del lugar o cuando, cuando viajaste? Um, oh, I moved to that place uh, last year because I have a new opportunity of uh, working in my dream job and I have family in that place and we can say all the things that we want to say. And the third one, what is your phone number? Oh, my phone number is 208-374. You can call me all the time that you want. Who is that man? Quien es ese hombre? Oh, that man is my boss. And I want to tell you something. He is very kind. He is all of the information that we want to say. And the last one, why are you telling me that? ¿Por qué me estás diciendo eso? Oh, because I need to explain the things. And I think that you need information about that situation because you feel that. All of the things. So, con estas preguntas, que son las open questions, we can add all the information. Podemos agregar todo lo que nosotros queremos decir sobre la pregunta. Y no nos limitamos. Es para mantener una conversación. This kind of question is better to ask when we are knowing something eh, or knowing someone. And we want to have all that information that we want to learn about that people. Esa pregunta la vamos a hacer cuando queremos conocer a la persona y necesitamos información sobre la persona o sobre un lugar al que estamos conociendo. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo del yes no question. We are not going to develop all the things about this kind of question because we are going to develop um, in the next topic. Solo vamos a 
hacer un ejemplo nada más de este tipo de preguntas. So, in this one, we have this kind of question, yes or no. And we are going to use the verb to be. Are you sick? Estás enfermo? Are you sick? What is the, the, the answer for this? Two possible answers. Yes, I am. Or no, I am not. That's it. Are you sick? Yes or no? They are not uh, uh, asking me, where are you feeling? That is something really different because someone says, what are you feeling right now? ¿Qué estás sintiendo en este momento? Oh, I am feeling like um, I have a headache or I have like a cough or I have fever or something like that. In that kind of question, we can add the information because they need to know. But in the first one, are you sick? It is like yes or no, or maybe. Cuando nos preguntan, ¿estás enfermo? Con la primera pregunta, solo tenemos, podemos decir que tres posibles respuestas. Yes, no, and maybe. Sí, no, y tal vez. Pero no vamos a ahondar mucho en eso, ¿verdad? Ya en la siguiente, ¿qué estás sintiendo en este momento? Claro que sí, porque no, vamos a dar más información de qué sentimos y encontrar una posible, un posible diagnóstico, una posible solución a eso. But that's it. So, um, tomorrow, I guess, we are going to develop all these questions in uh, using the verb to be. Por eso no vamos a, eh, a desarrollar um, las preguntas con el verbo to be porque la vamos a desarrollar mañana en el tema de mañana. So, this is just an example. Now, we have the topic number two. Tenemos dos eh, temas para la primera sesión. So, let's see. We have here the topic number two. And this is the objective. The topic number two is positive and negative statements using, eh, in the past, using the verb to be. Ya vimos en la primera parte eh, negative and positive statements, sentences, but in this case, we are going to use the verb to be to develop these kind of sentences. So, but in that case, we are just using the uh, irregular and regular verbs. So what is the objective for this kind of topic? It says by the end of this class, you will be able to make positive and negative statements in the past tense using the verb to be also, you will be able to talk about your background in English. For example, explaining where were you born uh, and when you came to the United States. This is an example. And um, these English conversation skills will help you introduce yourself and respond to questions using correct English grammar. And in this kind of um, courses, you are in the intermediate English. So in this case, if you are going to produce, that is the main point of this kind of courses or this kind of level. It is not like in the basic one or the basic one uh, that you are just gaining information, you are receiving information, but in this case, you are going to produce. So in this case, it says that you need to talk about your background your story, your, your, um, the things that you did in the past and how you did that. So in this, ca in this case, uh, we're going to learn how to create this kind of sentences, but at the same time, you are going to produce. En esta, en esta parte, nos dice que ustedes tienen que eh, producir. So in that case, you are going to learn how to create these sentences, but also you are going to learn how to use them. 
Vamos a aprender a crearlas, pero también vamos a aprender a usarlas. ¿Para qué? Para hablar de nuestro pasado, de nuestro entorno. Why? Because we need to know people. Tenemos que aprender a conocer a las personas y saber de qué forma vamos a hablar y contestar cuando estemos conociendo new people. So, the first thing that we are going to say is to write the, the uh, statements. We are going to write the uh, structure for this one. In this case, we are not going to use um, the irregular and regular verbs. Aquí no vamos a utilizar la estructura del de verbo irregular y del verbo regular. In this case, we are going to use the verb to be in past. Tenemos dos tipos de estructuras, las que llevan verbos irregulares y regulares y las que llevan el verbo to be. Es la misma estructura, solo le cambiamos una parte. Let's see. We have the pronoun. Then we have the verb to be in past. And then we have the complement. Also, we have three um, elements in this sentence. Tres elementos. Lo mismo que con los verbos irregulares, solo que aquí no pasamos al verbo to be. So, again, we are going to write the pronoun. I, you, he, she. It, we, and they. We, they. Then, we have the verb to be. In this case, we have a specific usage for this a verb to be. We have was and we have where. Tenemos dos. So, for I, we are going to use was. For you, we are going to use where. For he, she, and it, we are going to use was, and we and they were. In this case, we have this uh, difference between the usage of the verb to be. Ahí sí tenemos diferencia, ¿verdad? No como el did, que no tenía diferencia. En este sí vamos a hacer la diferencia. So, then we have the complement. I was a student. Buen estudiante. ¿Cuándo? En el pasado, pero no sabemos en qué momento. You were my neighbor. When? In the past. Maybe in my childhood. Maybe 10 years ago. Maybe the last week because I moved to another place. We don't know. He, she, or it was a teacher. For he or she, and it is for pets. In this case, it refers to animals or things. But in this case, we are going to use it like animals. Uh, we can say a model. And in the last one, we they were at the museum. So we have here simple, simple sentences. In the first one, I was a student. Fui un estudiante. You were my neighbor, fuiste mi vecino. He or she was a teacher. Él o ella fue un maestro o maestra. It was a model. Eso o ello fue un modelo. Nos referimos a animales en este caso. We and they were at the museum. Ellos estaban o estuvieron in the museum. So that's the uh, structure for the positive sentences. Now, with the negative ones, because we are going to talk about the structures and then we are going to create more examples. For the negative one, we have the structure again, and we have subject plus Bird to be in past again.
Then we have the difference, not. And then we have the complement. Tenemos la estructura. Subject plus verb in past plus not plus complement. Y vamos de nuevo. I it we and they. And we have the very impasse that we are going to use again was where was and where. Now we are going to add not, not, and the last one. And then we have our complement, playing tennis. Eating fish. Reading that book. And the last one, born in Mexico. So we have here, but in this case, we are using another um, a structure. Um, about the past, then we are going to develop in uh, in other sessions. In this case, we could, because we are using the ing form of the verb, but that is something something different. So, in this case, in negative one, we have the same structure, but using not. In this case, we are not using the uh, auxiliar did. En este caso no estamos utilizando el auxiliar did. En este caso solo estamos utilizando el not. Let me see. Yes. Um, thanks to Rodrigo uh, to say th that question. Um, I like to send to you this information all the weeks. Eh, a mí me gusta compartir la información todos los eh, jueves, because that's it, that is the last day of the week of this course, que es el último día de la semana del, del curso, ¿verdad? No de la semana en general. And in this case, eh, you will have this document in Google Docs. Van a tener ese documento de Google Docs en el que yo voy a estar trabajando. I, I have worked in the... In the Word document, like the document that we have in our computers, but I think it's better to do it in this um, way because you can have it in your computer or in your device without internet connection also. Oh, I will explain the ING, but let me end this part first. Um, so I will send to you the link for this document in which you can um, you can see all the information that I'm going to add because you will be participants of uh, this process. I will working in this um, document. Voy a trabajar siempre en este documento y voy a ir poniendo los objetivos de las siguientes clases. For example, if I share with you this document tonight, you are going to see that for tomorrow, I will add the objective for the next topics. Ustedes podrían ver cuando yo agregue lo que son los objetivos de los siguientes temas. So you will have this kind of information before. Um, Podrían llegar a tener ese, esa, esa información antes de las clases de los objetivos. Just the objective. Because if you can see that I like to work in the moment. Me gusta trabajar en el momento mostrándoles eh, los ejercicios, mostrándoles la, las frases y escribiéndolas para que ustedes vayan eh, desarrollando también esa parte. So I have all the information I like to do like 
two words in, in, in the same thing. Because I have all the information like this, like this, but I like to uh, present information in the moment with you in, in this uh, kind of document. So I will send to you this um, week. Se lo voy a mandar este jueves. Y vamos a estar así. Ustedes ya no van a necesitar tener like three documents in your device. No van a necesitar tener tres, cuatro documentos diferentes en su dispositivo. Just one link and you can um, see all the information all the time. Cuando ustedes quieran entrar al documento, ahí va a estar la información. No es que vamos a descargar el documento y lo vamos a tener ahí, se me va a olvidar que lo tengo ahí, sino que solo voy a acceder al enlace y ya voy a tener toda la información del documento. You're welcome. This is for you, so I am trying to help you to make this uh, process different. So why I am writing these verbs with ing? Someone asked. Let me see who was. Uh, See, Felix, yes. Why I am adding the ing? In this case, this is another uh, structure because I, as I was saying that it, uh, it is a different um, kind of a structure. Tenemos esta estructura eh, que la vamos a ir viendo más adelante que es cuando le agregamos el ing a los verbos, que es el gerundio. En español lo conocemos como el gerundio, en inglés es the gerund. O el continuo. We can say it like that. Eh, porque ese es el nombre que se le da. Cuando nosotros nos referimos al ING, es cuando nosotros utilizamos los verbos eh, in Spanish. Cuando decimos yendo, ando, volando, comiendo, eh, saltando. I was not playing. No estaba jugando. Es the end of the eh, verb. Es ese, ese final que se les pone. En este caso, lo hice de esta forma también para darle eh, dos tipos de eh, verbos. Porque eh, es como un poco más uh, like dynamic, es un poco más dinámico a la hora de crear oraciones, ¿verdad? Que nos está dando como en un momento del de presente. Estamos hablando del pasado, pero es algo que está pasando. Ok, pasó. Porque eh, estamos agregando eso. So, this kind of structures um, you are going to see in uh, present past and also in the future that uh, some actions that happen in the future that will happen in the future, but has some start in the present or the past. Así que van a seguir viendo esa estructura del uh, gerund, del gerundio, eh, más adelante también. Así que esos verbos con ing se conoce como gerundio o continuo, ya sea presente continuo, pasado continuo, and all of that. But in this case, it is just for examples. So, let's see. Okay, it's almost, almost a time. For the end of this um, session, I think, I don't know, questions in this moment, you have some question for this topic. I know it's kind of easy to understand uh, because you have the previous knowledge about this topic. So I don't know if you are like remembering all the things. Let me see. I have something here. Okay. Okay. So this is not complicated at all for you, I think. We have structures, and if we follow the structure, it's easier to create these kind of sentences. Ya que tenemos las estructuras, no nos vamos a perder. Solo seguimos la estructura. At the beginning, we have to keep in mind the structure, but at the end, we are going to create sentences like something very natural. Lo vamos a crear de manera natural. But at the end, because it is almost time to end this session number one, I need you to create some sentences in past. Van a crear unas oraciones en pasado. Ustedes van a decidir irregular and regular verbs or just the verb to be. Ustedes van a decidir cómo las van a hacer. Si con los verbos regulares e irregulares o con el verbo to be. I will give you like two minutes. Yes. Like 
two minutes, dos minutos, para crear um, like two or three sentences in past, and then we are going to share this uh, sentence. So you have two or three minutes. For the people that have problems with uh, speaking, because I have someone that has uh, problems uh, with the voice, you can write it in the chat or someone that doesn't want to talk because it is mm, very normal. Uh, you have the chat to write your sentence. So start writing and creating sentences in past. The chat, yes, you can share in the chat, or if you want to say it, you can say it with your voice. That's okay. I have some phrases here, and the number one says, I was in the market yesterday. Nice. I traveled la the last year. I traveled last year. Da is not in that sentence. I traveled last year. No, le, no, hay que utilizar el da in that sentence. You did not work yesterday. That's good. I didn't go to the restaurant. Nice. I was in the cinema yesterday. Perfect. I was visiting the beach. Good. I was not running in the park. Nice. I was cooking pizza yesterday. Wow, that's good. I went to the church last Sunday. Amazing. I was not playing soccer. Good. I went to the movies the last week. Again, no necesitamos poner el da, el, el T-H-E, in that uh, uh, spaces. Just last week. I went to the movies last week. Like that. My son ate chicken at lunch, okay? When I was a child, I like to play soccer, okay? I was not eating fish, good. She was playing piano. I was playing soccer the last weekend, okay? Okay, okay. I was learning English last year. The last year, in that case, last year. It was running the other day, okay? We started classes today, that's good. I was working yesterday. I didn't. I, I just, ah, but yes, I, I was working also. Um, he didn't play the piano yesterday, okay? I was not watching the movie. I went to the golf for the Fonseca yesterday. I did kickboxing the last week. Oh, wow. That's good. I was running last weekend. I was cooking my breakfast. Breakfast. I can turn on the microphone. The app says that you have to do it like, um, oh, really? I don't know why. I was married years ago. I was married. Mm -hmm. 
they were watching TV. I went to the library in the morning. I went to the library. In that case, I went to the library. I didn't like sports when I was a kid. You were angry with me. Oh, no. I hope no. Okay, very good. Nice ones. Muy bien, excelente trabajo. That's good. Muy bien. Okay. Now, we are going to end here this session. I know that it's time. Let me see. Because I think, I think, I think. Yes, that's it. I think it is like just one minute. But we are going to end here because um, we uh, begin uh, minutes. Uh, um, we have the hour. Y comenzamos unos minutos antes. Siempre vamos a comenzar unos minutos antes uh, because I have other group at nine. So vamos a comenzar minutos antes para terminar a tiempo. So thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for today. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and we are going to develop other topics. So good night and have a really, really good night today. See you tomorrow. Nos vemos mañana. See you. See you, see you.